So again, I found myself searching for inspiration while I was trying to come up with this week's video. I sat down and played some Diablo 2 Resurrected, an action RPG from the year 2000 that I'm sure, like me, is a game many of you played growing up. As I played, I realized that this game is full of awesome terrain and mystical locations, and one of the scenes that always stuck with me through the years was the Cairn Stones hidden within the Stony Field, where we find our most useful, our only useful NPC in the game, that's right, Deckard Kane. So first thing I needed for this project was some XPS foam. I picked up from the Home Depot for about $6. For this entire project, I used maybe a third of a single piece. The largest piece being that for the base of this terrain, which I measured out to be 10 inches by 10 inches, just to ensure I had plenty of room for the stones themselves and also have enough room to use as a gaming board if this is something that you want to incorporate into your tabletop games. Now for these Karen stones themselves, I cut out rectangular prisms from the foam board giving myself some extra length on the end to work with as I shape them down into the familiar stones we all know and love. So to cut the shapes into the stones, all I did was take an X-Acto blade and slowly and carefully trim the tips into a rounded obelisk, then shaving down and pinching out pieces of sides to really give them an organic and ancient look to them. After I had all six stones roughed out, I took this little torch slider and very carefully and in a well-ventilated space, began to melt down and round out each of these stones, being sure not to inhale any of these toxic fumes. And while I did that step, I also took the torch to the foundation, giving the ground a more natural look. Even though the entire game is played on a single flat surface, with the exception of the stairs in Act 4, and the first somewhat of a hill we see in Act 5. But hey, it is a 23 year old game, so we'll cut them some slack there. So after I had the Cairn stone shaped and the base ready to go, I took my low temperature hot glue gun and fixed the stones in place. Working with this foam, you need to be sure you're either using a low temperature hot glue gun, a foam safe super glue, or just standard PVA glue. I opted for the hot glue due to the speed and cost, but it really comes down to preference. And I would recommend to use what works well for your crafting style. Now during this step, I also decided that I would attempt to make the ominous red portal in the center that will take you to Tristan. Now to be completely honest with you, I was not entirely thrilled with the portal, how it turned out in the end. But ultimately, I did decide to keep it because it was a learning experience and I was planning on using the same effect in another project in a different way. And I think for that, it will work pretty well for it. So to actually create this portal, all I did was take some parchment paper and put the hot glue down in the shape of the portal, using the glue itself to try to create the effect and texture of the portal. Once that was done, I took a flickering tea light, pulled off the fake flame, and simply hot glued the portal over the light. Then all that was left to do was to glue the portal in place. Now to do that, all I did was trace on the tea light into the center of the stones, and then take my hobby knife and carefully cut out the circle through the foam so that I could turn it off from underneath, and hot glued it in place, making sure that it was oriented in the same way that it looks in the game. So after that was done, I just took some spackling and covered up the entire model except for the portal there making sure to fill that gap around the tea light, just giving the diorama a slightly smoother texture to the stones so they're not as jagged and more realistic to what the game models show. Mod Podge mixed with some gray paint and covered everything but the portal to give everything a protective coat. Now the gray paint isn't really used as a base layer for color, it's really just there as a way to ensure that I did cover everything with the Mod Podge and show me where and where I haven't covered it. The next thing I did after the Mod Podge dried was to take some black acrylic paint and put another coat over the glue layer as the base color for this project. Next, I just took some white glue and spread out some sand around the terrain in places I knew that it would overlap with the flocking in a later stage. Now, if I'd planned this out a little better, I would have applied that before I put the Mod Podge down as a way just to seal it in a little better later on down the line. So to actually paint this model, I started with the stones themselves and did the dirt afterwards so that I could get the colors and dry brushing on the stones and not have to go back and clean up the dirt. So to paint the stones, I started out with a nice neutral gray and overbrushed with a damp brush at about 75 to 80 percent of the stones in a nice thin layer. So that by the time I had finished one color, I could move on to the next, which was the same neutral gray with a tiny amount of brown just to warm up the color, as well as a little more white just to raise the contrast. After that layer was down and dried, I added a little more white to the gray brown layer from before and carefully dry brushed the stones, being sure to hit the high points that would be catching the most light. Finally, for the stones, I took just straight white and went through being very cautious and careful just to catch the very ends and tops of these stones to just really drive up that contrast. Next was to paint the portal. Now what I had originally envisioned for this portal was just to use thin layers and just build up 
the coat so you could have it transparent enough that you could actually see the light flickering through it. It turns out whenever you put really watered down paint onto hot glue, it'll just like to puddle up and run. So who would have figured, right? So this was at the point where I really had to consider just taking it out and filling the hole, retexturing the ground, and starting over at that section. But ultimately, I did decide that it'd be best if I just move forward with it and then gave you guys tips for what I would do in the future if I were to try to use hot glue like this. And my recommendations for that would do not be using hot glue like this because it did not work well. It has other applications that I could definitely see with the light, but this is not one of them. So ultimately, when I had finished that, all I had to do was go through with a thicker acrylic paint and just recover up all that just to make it look like the portal would somewhat look like in the game had I not even been trying to use the flickering tea light underneath. So if I were to try this again, I'd probably just go for UV resin and try to do a thinner paint of that, a little light, and probably still hot glue it. The light did flicker through the hot glue well, but only at the base and possibly with another material that might work better and you might be able to actually pull it off. Finally, all that was left to paint was the ground. Now to do this, all I did was take some brown paint and mix it with an almost mustard yellow to warm it up and dilute some of the red that was in the brown. Now while that layer was still wet, I took some of that same yellow and mixed it into the brown and wet blended it into a previous brown layer that was already on the model as a way to add some color variation to the ground, just to add a little more realism and interest to the model. Now that the paint had dried, it was time to move on to the final step and that was adding the tufts of grass and flocking to the base. Now the way I like to add my tufts to a base like this is to put them next to the rocks or on large empty spaces as a way to draw attention away from large voids and as a way to hide seams or where textures or colors meet in unnatural ways like at the edges of the rocks. And finally all that was left to do was to go through with some black paint and just go through and paint all the edges of the base, covering all of that pink foam. Once that was done, it was time for the final reveal. So here we have the Cairn Stones from Diablo 2, recreated as a piece of playable terrain. I really did have a lot of fun creating this piece and having the opportunity to experiment and learn how to use XBS foam to build terrain and create epic rocks. If you enjoyed this video and learned something interesting, I would love to hear your thoughts down below and would really appreciate it if you took the time to like this video and consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Anyways, until next time, I really do appreciate you for taking the time to watch. I hope you enjoyed it. Until then, keep crafting, keep learning, and believe in yourself. Thank you.